Hello everyone, in this video lecture we will learn together how to use Figma, that is uh, a tool for rapid prototyping. So before starting to see how Figma works, let's recap what is a prototype. A prototype is a concrete but partial representation of a, of a system. And it's a powerful tool for uh, exploring our design ideas and in particular for testing our ideas before implementing them into a final solution. Um, so during the course, you, you have seen uh, three kinds of different um, prototyping techniques. You start with low fidelity prototypes. So prototype that only lays out the main information and interaction possibility of your of your system of your solution with many missing details and the most common example of low fidelity prototypes is a paper-based prototype so what are paper-based prototype they are uh, an undrawn mock-up of the user interface usually uh, that is uh, sketched on multiple sheets of paper of different sizes so um, the key features of a paper prototype um, are uh, that the interaction is natural in the sense that the user simulate the interaction with, with the system, for example, by pointing with a finger to simulate the click of the mouse or by writing on the, on the, on the sheet of paper to simulate typing. Uh, so they are low fidelity in look and feel. Then you have also seen medium fidelity prototypes that are uh, sometimes called uh, wireframes. So um, the difference is that here is that medium fidelity prototypes are typically uh, implemented through uh, a tool. So they are computer prototypes. Um, and so you started to design, to visualize the user interface of your of your system with, with more details, but uh, they are there are still many different uh, missing details. So, for example, uh, in medium fidelity prototypes, you don't focus really much on on details like colors and fonts and font size. Um, so, this is the reason why medium fidelity prototypes should be in grayscale or black and white. Um, and you usually use static information like predefined pages, uh, templates, uh, and, and placeholders. Okay, so typically in medium fidelity prototypes, you, you design some, some screens in, of your interface just to show you, um, for example, a task of your solution to, to, to show to your customer how your application, how your website uh, solve a given task. Okay, so you, the focus is more on the functionality of your app rather than on uh, visual details like fonts and, and colors. And finally, then you have high fidelity prototypes that they, they can be actual computer applications with, with a final looking layout, uh, colors, fonts, uh, and, and so on. So your high fidelity prototypes look like uh, the final the final implementation the final solution uh, and so they are much more expensive to build uh, because for example more time is spent with, with graphical design um, and uh, so this is the reason why uh, it's important to start with uh, low fidelity and medium fidelity prototypes to, to explore your design ideas and then implementing high fidelity prototypes when, when you have uh, a reasonable set of feedback on your on your solution on your ideas okay um, so uh, figma is a tool that allows you to uh, implement to to design uh, medium fidelity and high fidelity prototypes uh, we will see figma however in the context of medium fidelity prototypes so you will use it uh, in, in the assignment to implement, to design a medium fidelity prototype, okay? So uh, a prototype in, in grayscale with, uh, with the focus on the functionality of your application rather than on visual, on the visual appearance of your, of your interface, okay? So let's start uh, looking at, at the platform. 
So Figma, as I said before, is an online tool. And this is, I think, an advantage because you don't have to install anything on your computer to start working with, with the tool. Um, and I would like to start this lesson um, looking at this specific page that is figma.com slash education uh, to highlight that Figma is free for students and educators. So uh, from this page, you can easily get uh, a student account by clicking on the get verified button. Uh, you then will have to insert some details about our university uh, and then you will get uh, a student account so that you can uh, exploit, you can use all the main functionality of, of the tool, okay? Okay, so now let's go to the uh, main page of Figma, figma.com. And this is the home page of the tool. Uh, there is a lot of stuff here. As you can see here, there are all your past projects that you developed in the past. Um, but anyway, I would like to start uh, this lesson showing how you can create a new project in Figma. So let's start with a blank project. Let's start from, from scratch. So we can click on new design file to create a new project. And this is the interface of the tool. I can obviously give a name to my project. Let's call it Figma and so on. Okay, so um, the first thing that I would like to highlight is this specific button here in the nav bar that is add comment, because um, I would like to highlight that Figma is a collaborative tool. So you can always invite your colleagues by clicking on the share button uh, and by inserting uh, the email to start working collaboratively on the same project so that then you can leave comments and you can work together to the same uh, prototype. And this is important for the course. Uh, you can use this feature to work collaboratively inside your, your group, okay? Now, the main interface of Figma is divided in three main parts. Uh, as you can see on the left, there is this column that is related to uh, layers and, and pages. So, uh, what are layers in Figma? Layers are uh, parent containers in which you can place other kind of other components like uh, buttons, text areas, images, and, and so on, okay? Um, so obviously in Figma, you can have multiple layers and we will see in a minute that the main layer is typically a frame, a frame that includes all, all the stuff of, of your interface. Uh, and you can also have more complex prototypes uh, with multiple pages, where a page is a collection of multiple layers. Then we have this uh, very large gray uh, area that is the working area. So the area in which we will drag and drop, we will create uh, our, our interface, our components like buttons, uh, text areas, and, and so on. So we can see it as uh, a table in which we will uh, put our prototype, we will create our, our prototype. And then um, on, the, on the right, there is this column that, is, uh, that has two main tabs, uh, design and prototype. So the design tab is related to the visual appearance of, of what we create here in the, in the working area. So for example, if we create a rectangle in the working area by selecting here in the shape menu, the, the rectangle shape, then with the mouse, I created the rectangle. The design tab, I can customize my rectangle, for example, by changing the background color, okay? By adding a border, for example, of three pixels, um, we, can, we can have rounded corners. For example, if I write here 30 pixels, okay, I have a rounded corner. Uh, I can customize also the sides of my, of my shape and so on. So the visual appearance of our prototype. Okay, then in the prototype tab, uh, instead, we will be able to add some dynamic behavior to our prototype. So for example, we will be able uh, to 
create a button in a given uh, screen and then linking this button to another page so that when I click on the button, uh, the prototype automatically displays the, the secondary screen. Okay, so we can add dynamic behaviors to our prototype so that we can simulate the interaction between users and, and our system. So as I said before, the goal of today is to show you how you can uh, design, how you can uh, implement a medium fidelity prototype. Okay, so uh, a prototype in grayscale uh, that shows the most important functionality of your, of your interface uh, without focusing too much on, on the visual appearance of, of the prototype. Um, so my idea is to create a very simple uh, mobile application um, for uh, an hypothetical social network uh, to display uh, posts, for example, and, and contacts and, and friends. Um, and to start this example, uh, we, we must start with, with friends. So, uh, as I said before, uh, the main building block of a prototype is, is, is the layer. So, um, the main layer in Figma is, is called uh, a frame. Uh, and so, now we are interested in, in designing and implementing uh, a prototype for a mobile application. So, the main frame of our prototype will be uh, the screen of our smartphone. Okay, so we need a, an area with the dimension of a smartphone in which we can put our, our elements. Um, so here, if I click on the frame menu, I can see that on the right, Figma already uh, provides us uh, a lot of uh, predefined frames. Uh, so for example, if I need to design uh, a mobile application, I can select a frame for a given smartphone. So for example, for an iPhone 14. So this is a frame that has the dimension of the iPhone 14. Uh, there are a lot of predefined frames, for example, also for Android smartphone, but also if I need to uh, implement a prototype for a website, for example, I can select uh, a desktop frame, for example, for a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, and so on. Also, if I need a tablet, I can select a predefined frame for, for a tablet, okay? So uh, you can always create your frame from scratch. So for example, here, if I click on frame, then I can use the mouse for creating a frame. Uh, but typically, the main frame is always uh, selected from the predefined ones. Okay, as you can see, we now have a frame in our working area. And the frame is a layer, as I said before. So here on the left, I have this first main layer. I can also rename it. So right click, uh, rename. I can call it main window, for example. OK, perfect. Um, now, my first idea is to create uh, another window to uh, display some information about the developer of this application, okay? Uh, so for example, uh, I will have a button here uh, that is linked with a secondary page showing information about the developer of this, of this fake social network. So let's create another frame that will represent the second screen of my, of my application, so again, I click on the frame menu and I create a new frame, obviously with the same dimension of, of the previous one. So I click on iPhone 14 again. Okay, I have this second screen that I can rename as, for example, about window. Now my idea is to have one button here that is linked with, with this about window. So how can I create a button in, in Figma? Um, I have several possibilities, but uh, I think that the easiest one is to create uh, a frame with a given shape, the shape of the button, and then uh, I will insert a text inside, inside the frame, okay, to uh, 
the text of the button. So let's click on frame. This time I will create the frame from scratch because I want a customized shape for, for my frame. So let's create a rectangular button. Okay. Uh, and this will be my button about. So let's rename the layer. Okay, perfect. Um, now I can obviously uh, add a background color uh, to my button to differentiate it from, from the background of the main window. Um, so I click on the frame, I go in the design tab and I can add a fill to my, to my button. Obviously we are designing a medium fidelity prototype. So let's use uh, a gray color. Okay, that's it. Perfect. Now, as you can see, my button is inside the main window. So it's linked with the main window. So if I select the, the, the button, I can also center it according to the, to the container, for example, by using these this buttons here in the design tab. So for example, I can align the button horizontally. Okay, um, I can also move this button to the top of the interface. Now let's add the text of the button inside. So I can click here in the nav bar on the text uh, item. Then I click here on the main window. My idea is to uh, write here the text and then move it inside, inside the button. So let's write about. Okay, and let's move this uh, inside the button by dragging and dropping it in the position that I want. Okay, as you can see now the text is inside the button. Uh, if I select the button, obviously in the design tab, I can also customize the text, for example, by increasing the font size to 20 and by changing the, the color of the text, for example, uh, I can also change the font, obviously. Uh, I don't find the text color. Uh, ah, it's probably fill, sorry. Yes, it's the fill of, of the color. So let's put it in white. Again, the text is inside the button, so I can align the text with respect to the container, so the button frame, uh, by using this, this menu here. So I can center horizontally, and I can also center the text vertically according to, to the container. Okay. So now we have the design of the main window, still preliminary with a button. Now let's design uh, the secondary window, which I would like to show some information about the developer, okay, of the application. Um, so an idea could be having here uh, an image of the developer and below the image some text describing the developer. Um, so we are designing a low fidelity prototype. So here we can put, for example, a placeholder for, for the image. Um, obviously I could download this image from the web and then dragging and dropping it inside my, my window. But now I would like to show you how to use a temp uh, plugin, sorry, for doing this operation. So in Figma, you can also install uh, external plugins for a variety of tasks and then use these plugins for, for, for designing your prototype. Um, and you can install new plugins clicking here on the button on the top left corner of the navbar. And then you can go here on plugins and you can find uh, a lot of different plugins with, with different goals and functionality. In this case, I have already installed uh, Iconify, okay, that is a plugin through it in which you can search icons uh, to be directly imported in your in your um, 
in your prototype, in your in your file in Figma. Okay. So for example, now I need uh, an icon for uh, a placeholder of a user image. So I write user, and I can select, for example, this this icon. I can also customize the the color of the icon. Now we are uh, making an example about uh, a medium fidelity prototype. So let's use the black and white icon. I can also customize uh, the sides of, of the icon here, or I can import the icon and then resize it uh, directly by using the, the mouse, okay? Now we have this placeholder image in our window, uh, in our about window, as before we can center it horizontally. And now let's add some text below below the image, again by clicking on the text uh, button here. Okay, so for example, I'm Alberto Monge, a researcher at Politecnico di Torino. I can also resize my text area. I can, in the design tab, center the text, uh, and I can also center the text area according to the to the container. Okay. Obviously, this is just an example. You will surely design better medium fidelity prototypes in your assignment. This is just to show you the main functionality of, of Figma. Okay, now that we have the two uh, windows, let's start adding some interaction to our prototype. Uh, so we would like to link this button to this page so that every time the user click on the button, the prototype displays the about window, okay? How can we, we implement this? So we click on the about button, so the element uh, to which we, we would like to add the interaction, and we go on the prototype tab. Here we can see that we can add here with the plus an interaction to this button, and we can have different uh, interaction possibilities. So for example, we can have on tap, on drag, uh, mouse enter, mouse leave, and so on. Here we are interested in the tab. So when the user tap on the button, okay, click on the button. Uh, and then we can also specify different actions. So what happens when the user tap on the button, we would like to, in this case, navigate to a second page, and in this case, the about window. As you can see now, there is an arrow between the button and the about window, so we are sure that the two elements are now linked together. And how we can test this, this behavior? Uh, we can simulate um, the interaction with a prototype by clicking here on the play button, okay? So I click on the play button and Figma opens a new tab on our browser uh, and already it already places an iPhone 14 uh, around our prototype so that uh, we can show to our customer uh, our how our solution will look like on a real device. Now we have a medium fidelity prototype, so it's still preliminary, it's in gray scale, but imagine uh, if you have here a high fidelity prototype, uh, you can show to your customer how your, your solution will, will behave on a real device. Okay, now here I have my main screen and the button uh, at the top of the interface, and if I click on it, as we can see, Figma automatically uh, change the page showing the, the about window with, with the placeholder and with, with the text, okay? So maybe we can also add a button here to go back uh, in the main window, right? So let's drag and drop this image below and let's add uh, a button here. We can obviously copy and, pay, and paste 
the button about uh, and then we can change it uh, as we want. So now I drag and drop this uh, copy inside my about window. I also drag and drop, no, it's the wrong one. I should. Okay, let's no. Uh, obviously, I made a copy, so uh, both of the uh, buttons are linked with the about window. So I delete I delete one of the links, and I drag and drop the about button in the copy of the about button in the about window, and I change it, for example, by changing uh, the text, right? So here it can write back. Now let's put again the about window. Let's center it again. And let's also center this one. OK, we can also uh, put this button at the same height of this one. So if we go into the design tab, we can see uh, the coordinates of, of, uh, of the position of our button. So let's copy 69 in the back uh, button as well. OK, so that they are uh, aligned uh, vertically in the screen. And now, obviously, I need to define an interaction for the back button as well. So let's select it, go in the prototype tab, and let's add an interaction on tap, navigate to main window, OK? So that we have the about button that is linked with the about window and the back button that is linked with the main window. Let's try this, this interaction. OK, we have the about button. If I click it, I go on the second page. Now, if I click on the back button, I go back to the main window of our application. OK. Now, uh, what I would like to add to my main window is a list of posts here, of social network posts here, that can be scrolled. OK, so to simulate, for example, the infinite scrolling mechanism that you can find on all the uh, contemporary social networks like Facebook and Instagram. OK, um, so how we can implement this? Um, I will start by creating a placeholder for a post. OK, and then I will replicate it, uh, for example, 10 times to, to simulate a list of, of 10 posts in my interface. And I will show you how you can implement the scrolling mechanism that is another interaction, another dynamic behavior that can be implemented in the prototype uh, tab here on the on the right. So let's start by creating uh, a placeholder for, for a, a social network post. Uh, we can create in the main window again uh, another frame that will be the container of the post. So let's click here on the frame and let's create a rectangle here. Perfect. So now we can change the background color of the placeholder to differentiate it from the background of the main window. So let's add a fill to our frame. Uh, again, I would like to uh, use uh, a gray color because we are designing a medium fidelity prototype. And if I want to replicate the color of the, of the buttons, uh, obviously I can select the button and check the, the code of the color, but I can also use this, this tool, the pen here, to get automatically the color by clicking on it. Perfect. Now let's center the frame according to the container. Okay, it was already centered. Let's rename the frame as, for example, post uh, post, OK. Now, inside the post, uh, inside the placeholder, we could, for example, insert an image here 
the, the profile image of the user. We can then insert maybe, I don't know, uh, the title of the post, some text and an associated image, uh, the image that the user can upload uh, on the post. For It's just an example. So let's start by adding here the profile image. Again, I can use Iconify. So I go on plugins, Iconify, and I select, for example, I don't know, this image here. That will be the image uh, of the user that is that has posted the post. Okay, let's resize this image and let's put it on the top left corner of, of the post. Perfect. Then we can add, for example, a title for, for the post. So let's write post title and let's drag and drop the title near the image, the profile image. Now we could add, for example, an image here, the image of the post. So again, let's use Iconify plugins, Iconify. Let's look for some image about nature, for example. Okay, let's use this one. Let's, oops. I drag and drop it into my frame and inside my post, I resize it. We can put also the image on the right and then some text here uh, that is the main text of, of the post. So let's create another text area. This is the content of the post. And maybe let's uh, recite, let's reduce the text, uh, the text size, let's use 15, for example. And now I, I move this text inside the post and maybe I recite the area, the text area, okay? Okay. Again, it, it's just an example. You you will surely design better prototypes in, in your assignment. Um, now, I have this post. Obviously, uh, in your prototype, um, you will maybe add some, some real content here. So you will decide a title. You will write something here to simulate um, to simulate a post, this is just a placeholder. Uh, and the idea of the placeholder is that I can replicate it multiple times to simulate the list of posts without worrying too much on, on the content of, of the post, okay? So uh, my idea is to replicate this, uh, this post multiple times. So obviously I could, for example, copy and pasting it multiple times, so now I copied and pasted the post and I can replicate posts in this way. Um, however, uh, as these are placeholders, now imagine that you want to modify something in your placeholder, for example, changing the text here. Uh, what happens? Uh, you should replicate the updates in all your, your copies so that, so you, you should uh, modify this sentence here, but then you should also replicate the, the updates in all your copies, okay? So there is a problem of scalability. Uh, a solution here is to transform this uh, post into a component, okay? So I can right click on the post and transform the post into a component by clicking on create component. As you can see now, also the color of, of, the, of the item in the menu changed. Uh, and now if I copy and paste a component, okay, as before, what's the difference? The difference is that if I uh, update uh, 
uh, one of my components or better if I update uh, if I update the main component that this this one the original component the updates are replicated on all the copies okay and this is clearly an advantage when you have to define something that you reuse multiple times in, in your in your prototype okay uh, and this was the, the the main the main component so let's put it first okay we can now create multiple copies of our of our post as you can see there are some posts that are included in the main window and some posts that are outside the main window and right now figma uh, placed some posts inside the main window frame but placed the other posts that are outside the the main window uh, as root elements here on the left so the first thing to do uh, is to group together this this list of posts uh, so remember that we want to uh, create an area in which we can scroll a list of of posts so i select all the posts together as you can see the posts are selected here on the left i click i right click on one of them and I click on group selection okay now I have a group of all my posts that I can drag and drop inside my main window okay so now all the posts are included into a group that is inside the main window now uh, an additional step that we need to perform to uh, define a scrollable area is to create a frame that includes the area that we want to scroll uh, to do that we can perform a right click on the group uh, and we can click on frame selection now as you can see we have uh, a frame that includes our group and the frame will be our scrollable area um, so another step is to define the size of this scrollable area Obviously, we would like to scroll uh, posts inside our main window so we can select the frame and resize it. In this case, for example, to the bottom of our screen. Okay, this will be the scrollable area that includes a, po a group of posts that obviously is bigger than the scrollable area, right? Perfect. Okay, now we have our area and we can add an interaction, a dynamic behavior to this area to specify that this area will be scrollable uh, so that the user can scroll it. Okay, so we click on the frame, we go on the prototype tab and here you, you can see that we have uh, an overflow scrolling uh, item and we can say that this area will be vertically scrolling vertically scrollable sorry okay let's let's try if it works we can click on the play button we have our group of posts some of them are already visible and we can simulate the scroll with the mouse so i place the cursor here and i try to scroll and posts can be scrolled actually okay uh, what's the problem here? The problem is that, okay, the posts can now be scrolled, but they also move uh, towards the top of the interface. Uh, so now we would like to fix the scrollable area so that uh, the posts uh, don't go towards the top of the interface. Okay, so we, we should fix this, this area here, right? So let's go back to the, to the prototype and we can do this by 
selecting the frame in the design tab um, and we can select clip content okay so we select the the area that we would like to to which we would like to add the scrollable mechanism and we click on clip content and this fixes the position of the scrollable area let's try and it seems to to work okay so now we have a scrollable area that is in a fixed position and we can simulate the scrolling the scrolling mechanism okay obviously we can do the same uh, with horizontal scrolling okay we already implemented the list that can be scrolled vertically now let's imagine to have here um, above the the posts uh, a list of uh, images that represents our our contacts on this social network so our friends on this social network and if we click on this on an image we can open for example i don't know a chat with with a given with a given comment um, with a given friend to start chatting with with him okay so again let's create a placeholder for for a given user and then we will replicate the placeholder uh, multiple times uh, in this case for example we can think about um, an image and maybe a text with with the name of our our friend so inside the main window we can create for example a frame that will include uh, an image and the name of our contact so inside this frame we can put uh, again an icon with iconify so the profile image of our our friend let's use for example this one i don't know it's the same import icon uh, obviously, we have to resize the image. Okay, it's already inside the frame. We can center the image according to the container. And maybe we can add the name here of our uh, friend. So let's create a text area. let's insert some text maybe you can uh, resize the text size let's use 10 and we can move the text inside the, the frame below the image okay if we want we can also uh, add a background color to the frame so let's use again the gray color here okay now we can as before uh, maybe translate this frame into a component so create component and we can replicate the component multiple times so Command C, Command V. Command V. As you can see, Figma helps us to align the elements with, with the red lines. Again, this is just an example. Uh, I'd like to stress this point multiple times. You will need in your uh, medium fidelity prototype to, for example, uh, use different images for, for different friends. You, you should actually insert uh, multiple posts with different titles and, and, and text. Again, this is just an example to show you the main characteristics of, of the platform. Let's move this and oops. Okay, as before, uh, we should group together our, our list of elements. 
So let's select them. Okay. Um, and let's group them together. Create group, group selection. And then we can move our group again in the main window. All right. Maybe we could also rename the frame, the main uh, component as uh, contact. Okay, the, the renaming operation is not reflected on the copies, so let's rename them just because otherwise we create uh, confusion in our uh, layers. Okay, we can also, for example, rename this uh, frame here as our post list. And then we will rename the, the frame of our friends uh, as well. So now, uh, as before, we should create a frame that is the area that, will, uh, that the user will be able to scroll. So right click on the group and frame selection. And this will be rename our contact list. Then we have to resize uh, to specify the dimension of our scrollable area. For example, here I can um, I can define the the size of my my scrollable area by using the post list as a reference. And then we should click on the on the area and we should add the overflow property, in this case, the horizontal scrolling, right? And the final step to do is to use the design tab to fix the position of the scrollable area. So I select contact list and I click on clip content. Let's try if it works. Okay, now we have the area of posts that can be scrolled vertically, and we have the list of contacts that we can scroll horizontally. And then we have the button that links uh, the prototype to a secondary page, the about page, okay? Okay, so this was just uh, a very simple example to show you how to create a medium fidelity prototype uh, in Figma. Um, we created this prototype from, from scratch by creating a blank project. Uh, the last thing that I would like to show you in this video lesson is, the, is about templates. So uh, there is a very large community of users in Figma that creates and publishes um, templates uh, on the platform that can be directly imported in your workspace and can be reused and modified as you want. Okay, so if we go back to the home page of Figma and then we click here on community, we enter the community page in which you can find uh, several templates that you, can, that you can reuse. So for example, again, if you need to uh, design um, medium fidelity prototype for uh, a mobile application, you could, for example, search for wireframe in a mobile context, for example. So there are a lot of templates uh, that you can see here in, in the page. For example, uh, this one is an Android plus iOS mobile wireframe kit, you can click on get a copy here and Figma will create uh, a copy of, of the template inside your, your, 
your Figma account, okay? As you can see, this is a template that includes multiple pages and multiple components and screens for Android, for iOS, and so on. So for example, if you need to design uh, a medium fidelity prototype with a nav bar, you can reuse this one, for example. Or if you need a date picker uh, or a keyboard, for example, you can reuse this, this component. Okay, so you can import templates in your Figma account and you can start your pro your you can start uh, modifying and reusing uh, these these templates okay obviously in this course we are interested in uh, designing medium fidelity prototypes in Figma but as i said uh, at the beginning of the lesson Figma can be used also for uh, high fidelity prototypes so prototypes that look like uh, a final implementation, the final product. Uh, so if we go back uh, to the to the community uh, page, uh, we can also uh, start using uh, templates that represent high fidelity prototypes. Okay. So for example, uh, I don't know. This one is a prototype for iOS 16. And as you can see, this uh, template is about a high fidelity prototype. So you can you have components that can be reused in the context of a high fidelity prototype. Okay, but again, our goal is to design uh, at least right now with Figma medium fidelity prototypes. Okay, this concludes this lesson. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next uh, lessons. Thank you.